Welcome back my fellow radiation nerds. Today we're diving deep into the radioactivity and the geology of a very unique mineral called the radiobarite. If you enjoyed this content, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the upcoming uploads. Thanks, and now back to the video. Radiobarite is a variation of barite mineral, and as the name suggests, it is radioactive as it contains a small amount of radium-226. Since radium is chemically very similar to barium, it can be easily incorporated into barite mineral structure during its formation if it is present in the surrounding environment, usually in trace amounts found in groundwater or in the surrounding uranium minerals. Its crystals have a brownish color and form orthorhombic structure and score about 3 to 3.5 on the most scale of mineral hardness. What makes radiobarite particularly unique is that it contains radium without its parent isotopes, such as uranium, thorium, or protaxinium. However, impurities can sometimes result in the presence of those elements in the mineral. Radium-226 has a half-life of 1,600 years, meaning that for a pure radiobarite to exhibit detectable radioactivity, it must have formed within the past few thousand years. Non-radioactive barite is the primary source of element barium, which is mainly used in natural gas and oil drilling to prevent blowouts, but it is also added in small amounts to many everyday items. If radiobarite is mined instead of the non-radioactive barite, contamination can occur since radium is very difficult to separate from barium due to their chemical similarities. However, this is rare, as the ore is strictly measured to ensure that it doesn't exceed any norm limits. My sample of radiobarite comes from Yenikov in Czech Republic, a region that is known for its high-grade uranium deposits. The sample has beautiful, large brown crystals, which do not fluoresce under black light and are formed on top of quartzite matrix. Even though radiobarite contains only trace amounts of radium, its radioactivity is detectable with most Geiger counters. My sample measures at around 400 counts per minute on my Ludlow Model 3 with a 44-9 probe at 1 cm distance. The emitting gamma dose rate is rather low, at approximately 0.12 microsieverts an hour over background radiation, when measured with my racet at 1 cm distance. A quick gamma spectroscopy of my radiobarite mineral revealed an interesting gamma spectrum. I expected to see a clean radium-226 spectrum, but the peak at 144 keV indicates the presence of natural uranium. This is most likely due to the impurities that were picked up by the mineral during its formation in a uranium-rich environment. For comparison, here's a spectrum of pure radium-226 from an old radium-painted watch. While similar, the peak from uranium-245 at 144 keV is clearly missing, which is a distinctive feature between natural uranium and radium spectra. Exploring the geology and the radioactivity of my radiobarite mineral was a lot of fun, and I certainly learned a lot about it. I want to hear from you. Did you know about the radioactivity of radiobarite before? And do you have any samples of it? What other radioactive minerals should I cover in the future videos? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If yes, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to my channel so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. Also, feel free to check out my coffee page where you can donate a nice cup of radioactive coffee and support my work financially. And remember, stay active.